Hey everyone, it's Dr. Rick, and today's unboxing is on NAC, N-acetylcysteine. N-acetylcysteine, I remember hearing about this in residency, med school, because it was uh, used to take care of uh, Tylenol toxicity. And I didn't really, I didn't realize there was actually a Tylenol toxicity issue. Uh, that is the size of the capsule. It's a pretty decent size, uh, standard, I guess. But uh, Tylenol toxicity, would be when somebody would insist and gulf a bottle full of Tylenols and that would make the liver fail. In fact, uh, sometimes when taking out liver cancer and the whole liver's taken out and then replaced uh, with another donor liver, you would want to hit the body with massive doses of Tylenol between the two livers to destroy any possible leftover remnant cells of liver cancer. So in cases where you'd have people overdose on Tylenol, uh, that could be either with the Tylenol from the 70s and 80s or now with uh, hydrocodone, Vicodin, uh, Tylenol with codeine, a lot of people are still on painkillers and the painkillers always have a, a piggyback of Tylenol with them. So if you're taking a painkiller three to four times a day, you're hitting a high dose of Tylenol. So uh, this is nice to have NAC around just in case, but uh, interesting information that I came up with uh, in, in doing the research, there's a lot of other uses for uh, NAC. So here's a couple of papers. I'm just gonna flash this like I usually do. You can look these up. This is just the basic physiology of how NAC uh, helps with reactive oxygen species. Uh, everybody will hear antioxidant as a buzzword and antioxidant is helpful because if you have too much oxidation it will lead to inflammation and if you have an antioxidant or something that supports antioxidant roles you'll be able to decrease your inflammation although lifestyle change is always going to be the first way. So one of the basic premises is that uh, glutathione this is a precursor n acetylcysteine is a component of the amino acid cysteine, and that is a precursor for glutathione. Glutathione is what the people in Beverly Hills are using as injections to make themselves feel, feel young, but there's other side benefits to that. So uh, this paper re reviewed a lot of information. Nice study by NIH, National Institute of Health. Uh, talking about the, par uh, the pathophysiology, uh, it's specifically cystic fibrosis, where you have difficulty with mucus plugging of the lungs. Great little thing to help with mucus. Uh, and in, in those same terms, uh, ulcerative colitis, asthma, chronic cough, great thing, especially with COVID. I'll get to that at the end. Uh, but it also talked about uh, how you might be able to get some benefits from neurological or neurodegenerative disorder, muscle enhancement, even to the point of uh, insulin resistance. And this was a review of several papers that all distributed or talked about NAC. And speaking of insulin resistance, in mouse studies, there were usefulness. It was useful in uh, decreasing or calming down the development of early stage type 2 diabetes. So type 2 diabetes has I am hot to trot with regards to insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes, I think, starts with insulin resistance. And if you can actually use a supplement that will decrease, in addition to healthy lifestyle, exercise, uh, proper nutrition, why not? Especially if there are other side benefits, which I'm going to get to in a second. Um, this study was another mouse study. Uh, sometimes we'll have to go to animal studies. Uh, sorry about that with animal activists, but animal studies give you a safety window so that you can go to human studies and human studies will give you a safety window before giving it to the general population. That's the way research goes. But uh, mouse studies, although uh, you have to be taken with a grain of salt and interpreted, the mouse studies did show improvement with insulin resistance. Uh, when you gave this at a proper dose to a mouse that you induced a fat state or insulin resistant state with, that's when they just feed mice rat chow and just fill them up to get them fat and insulin resistant. Well, in, improvement showed with the use of NAC. Um, and I think, yeah, this uh, old study that I just mentioned too, and it's not old, but this study I just mentioned, it talked about a sweet spot of uh, 1200 milligrams per kilogram per day of, uh, for rats. It worked better than higher dose and lower dose. So there is a sweet spot. Um, 
this is back, going back to animals or humans. This is a study that talked about uh, possible linking of in the effect of how this helps with insulin resistance. Uh, in a lot of uh, humans, insulin resistance is also associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. So this, in addition to its uh, help with infertility, definitely a positive with very little side effects. So I'm very impressed with the, the benefits of NAC. I've always heard my alternative medicine colleagues in the naturopathic world use it. Um, I would like to hit targeted specifics. And as far as glutathione is suggested, I'd rather go uh, be in the past, uh, I'd rather go with increasing glutathione levels using SAMe, S adenosyl methionine. And uh, uh, the, the problem is it's, it's price. Compared to SAMe, this is much cheaper. And there's other side benefits, which I'm gonna uh, try to present to you. So the other thing that would help uh, with uh, cystic fibrosis and uh, COPD is the mucus. It seems to thin out mucus uh, because of its effect with that amino acid cysteine being a precursor. And when you can thin out mucus, again, it will help with polycystic ovarian syndrome and infertility. It will help with irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, and with chronic cough that's due to mucus plugs, like in cystic fibrosis patients. If you don't know what cystic fibrosis is, it's when you just have uh, the young kids will usually, if they're declared a cystic fibrosis, we have problems with uh, respiration because they'll chronically get infected. You can't clear the mucus. This is great. So uh, compared to what's available out there, I think, and, and lack of much side effects, I think this is great. And the other thing to also keep in mind is that the studies show IV works just as well as oral versus glutathione, where I don't think oral glutathione works that well. For those of you who like glutathione, that big Hollywood metabolite that is supposed to give you longevity, if you can find somebody to give you IV, great. Uh, I don't really trust glutathione in oral form. And I think there are some side effects from what I remember. I'll probably do a video on glutathione but uh, my average patient can't afford an IV. I can't afford an IV. And uh, again, if this is a precursor to glutathione, then why not? And I guess we should talk about glutathione. So if this is going to be, if the crux of uh, taking care of inflammation and disease is gonna be glutathione as an anti-aging, uh, antioxidant, then let's just speak a, a two sentences about glutathione. Whenever you have, um, uh, mitochondria uh, break down fuel sources and get, produce ATP, there's always going to be, especially if it's carbohydrate driven or, or uh, glucose mediated, you know, there's two fuel sources, glucose and fat. If it's glucose mediated for the average American, you, you can make ATP, but the side effect of having ATP as energy for life is that you'll develop reactive oxygen species, ROS. And sometimes and which is a bad thing. It sometimes signals mTOR and that brings on cancer and inflammation. Uh, the lining of all the endothelial, uh, uh, the, your capillary beds will be irritated. So if you can decrease inflammation with a component that, or oxidation, reactive oxygen species, decrease oxygen uh, oxidation with uh, healthy living, why not? And that's the lifestyle change. But glutathione actually works as, uh, it, it's like a magnet that takes the reactive oxygen species and neutralizes it. And then glutathione takes that and uh, bring, presents it so that you excrete that reactive oxygen or you uh, break down the reactive oxygen species. And then glutathione has a substrate, will go back and get reused. So it's over and over again, kind of like a, a recharged battery uh, from solar. So it, it's a beautiful thing. This, uh, so if you have high glutathione levels, Fantastic, but this provides glutathione substrate. This makes glutathione, so why not? Uh, the, the information on glutathione is robust. The information on N-acetylcysteine, if you look at mouse models and human trials and review of papers, pretty decent. Again, lack of, side, lack of many side effects with this. So the other thing that was really cool with this, I've seen some uh, small circles of psychiatry use or uh, N-acetylcysteine for mood, especially if it's mood-related skin picking. There's something about the calming effect of having N-acetylcysteine 
has your precursors to cysteine has maybe an antioxidant, but uh, specifically dermatology and psychiatry seem to relate to its use in, in robust papers without, again, side effects. When you can have a supplement do the same thing or perform the same thing as a medicine, why not if there's no side effects? If you can have a supplement do what a lack of medicine, if there's no medicine for skin picking and you just have to go to uh, antipsychotic, fantastic. But why not just take a supplement? So uh, the question is how much? This is cheap. And the question would be how long? Well, as long as you can afford and have no side effects and it's working. So uh, this paper was uh, from dermatology clinics and it helped, uh, it revealed that the dose is about 1200 to 2400 milligrams a day for an average human that they found was helpful. Uh, it seemed to also help not only with the skin problem, the skin disorder, but impulsivity control. So now you're getting into mood and brain. And there were some suggestions about uh, neurodegenerative changes, or at least helping with decreasing Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. So this thing is packed with positives with very little uh, evidence for uh, side effect, no downside. Finally, as far as COVID, uh, actually, yeah, here's the title. You can search the title. As far as, I just wanted to finish off with this, as far as COVID is concerned, there's also a benefit with NAC that you'll see. I think other, uh, I follow a couple other guys who are big COVID, uh, I guess, translators, physicians that are COVID translators. And there was mention at one point in time when they found that the COVID viral infection would also cause uh, uh, clotting, blood clotting. They found that von Willebrand's factor was being uh, stimulated to uh, cause a platelet plug. Uh, without getting into detailed, uh, but uh, when you have these clotting factors in the bloodstream and they're, they're just floating around neutral, waiting for a fight, when they find that there's a cut in the blood vessel somewhere, they want to stop that cut. And one of the fa factors is called von Willebrand's factor. And uh, when it is triggered, it, ca it, it causes a magnetic attraction to platelets. Platelets are little things that float around in the bloodstream. And when you accumulate magnetically a whole bunch of platelets, you get this big plug, like a snowball, and the plug plugs up the hole in the blood vessel so you stop bleeding. And uh, Now the problem is in COVID infection, it would stimulate, there would be no tear in the lining of any blood vessel, but uh, especially in the lungs, the uh, COVID virus would stimulate von Willebrand's factor to start plugging. And that's why the little kids with Kawasaki's disease looking symptoms, they would plug up, uh, have thrombosis and block blood vessels. Same thing with a lot of other uh, uh, end organs, uh, the gut, the heart. So um, this thing, if you took enough knack, would cleave the plug. It would stop or neutralize that von Willebrand's factor from plugging. So, I mean, you could do heparin like we usually do. Uh, they, they were doing heparin studies in the hospital to see if you thinned out the blood for patients with COVID, if you would stop that blood clotting. And there are side effects to heparin, but okay. So there's a couple benefits to this thing. And I just wanted to mention that last study. So there's a couple benefits. And so number one would be antioxidants. Number two, if you're insulin resistant, which I think a lot of Americans are, that's why I'm doing a lot of topics on insulin resistance, it would help decrease if it's early enough in its use. Number three, if you can get um, improvement in the way muscle performs and neurodegenerative disease it hits at a, an early age, why not? Number four, it's known to help with uh, uh, Tylenol toxicity in case it gets to that point. Uh, and and again, with regards to mucus plugging and cough, again, related to COVID, why not use it? Because it seems to help the lungs work better. Number five, if it does help with blood clots or people who have a tendency to stroke or people who have COVID infections, you have positive win. You have the blood clots taken care of. You have the clearing of the lung with mucus because a lot of my COVID patients, not to make this a COVID video, but a lot of my COVID patients are still, after the infection is gone, they still have problems with shortness of breath and cough. Um, if at, at the least with regards to insulin resistance, if you are COVID infected, dealing with cough, trying to prevent blood clots and you're a little bit on the heavy side, why not? Now, if you don't have COVID, fine. If you're just insulin resistant, uh, body mass index is peaking up greater than 25. I think this will be a great uh, supplement. So I'm giving this one a thumbs up. 
I think that NAC has great potential, uh, especially with my COVID patients and perhaps with my insulin resistant patients. Um, as far as skin, I don't have that many patients that have uh, skin picking, but if there is an option and everything else has failed, I'd say go for it. So don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully this helps with uh, your ideas about NAC or maybe glutathione, uh, beating, aging. Uh, and if you have any questions, put them down below. Otherwise, share this with other people who might be on the fence with looking for something like this, especially if they're COVID survivors. And I'll see you in the next video.